Hi, and welcome to part two of creating an epic prog metal song. If you haven't seen part one, check it out here. If you have seen part one and you're back to see part two, then you rock. This video is sponsored by the Northern Ireland Arts Council. So today is going to be all about guitar solos. I think the obvious thing to do after the second chorus in a song is to do the guitar solo, and that's exactly what I plan on doing. But when I listen to the song today fresh, it's been a few days since I did the last part, I can hear that there's a certain predictable nature to the song. After the intro, the drums stop, then verse one, the chorus, which is the same as the intro, the drums stop, then verse two, and the chorus, and the drum stop. Now, by the end of chorus two, I think that's a predictable thing to happen. So I don't want that to happen. So I want the drums to introduce a new tempo and become a feature momentarily of the song and introduce a completely different feel. And hopefully I'll come up with some chords for that. And then we'll try and compose a guitar solo. So here's where the song currently ends. <laughs> So at that point there, that's exactly where I want to introduce the new tempo. So we'll remove everything from there, except for the vocals. I do want the vocals to carry across. And we'll introduce a new tempo. Now, the original tempo of the song is 90, and I've sort of worked out through air drumming that the new tempo should be 120. So let's put a new drum track in here. So there's going to be a slight double kick feel to it. Yeah. Let's put a snare at the start of each section. And I like these beats that have the China symbol acting as the ride. So let's try that. Yes. Cool. Stretch that out into the distance so that we've got something to play over. Now, the final chord there is a G, so I think the new part should start on G and Maybe the bass guitar and the rhythm guitars could just chug along in the same time as the double kick drums. So we'll try that. Let's go for it. I think it'd be interesting at this point to add a pad sound from the keyboards using a strings patch because there's some ambiguity in the bass guitar and rhythm guitar lines. There's no thirds in the harmony. So I think you could automatically expect those to be both major chords. And I was thinking something more like G major, F minor. You know, because for a guitar solo, I think it might be more interesting to play over because it'll 
um, forced me to think a wee bit more carefully about harmony. Whoa, I didn't play any bum notes. Amazing. All right, let's tidy this section up a wee bit. I think we more than likely need maybe um, two bars of this on its own before the actual keyboards come in, because I don't really necessarily hear the guitar solo come in straight away. I think this new beat needs to be introduced and then the guitar solo comes in less here. No Right, so what I would like to do now is take this section and loop it eternally, get the guitar out and improvise over it for an hour or so and see what I can come up with as far as composing a guitar solo is concerned. So here's the first part of the guitar solo that I've come up with. Um, I started out in G Luddian. and then to F minor. And then into G dominant harmonic minor. And then into F Dorian. Let's see if we can record that. That guitar solo is really crying out for a new section to arrive um, with a completely different drum beat and move to the C minor. So let's let's have a go at that. Um, I can already feel what drum beat I want to put in. Yep, perfect. And we're going to assume for now that we're going to repeat that four times before we move on yet again. So we're most definitely in the key of C minor now. So this is the section that I've written for this. Um, all C minor for now. And then there's a wee run here. I'll explain that. that that's a scale that I like to use quite a lot. So it's... So instead of playing any actual tones on the guitar, um, I avoid them and only play semitones and thirds. We can extend it over other octaves as well, but in this case, we're just using this. And then we move into the harmonic minor thing again. Let's see if I can record that. Right, 
Right, so I've been playing about a lot with uh, open string technique that I really like and I think it suits the song because it sort of increases the intensity of the guitar solo. Let me see if I can play it slowly for you. And then I play the same thing up an octave. And then just a scale to finish it off. So that started off on that scale I was saying about before that has the that has that semitone third thing with no whole tones in it. And we're doing some harmonic minor as well. And there was a wee Luddian bit there. So there's a couple of different things and we'll, we'll try and get it played up to speed now and then I'll talk through some of the harmonic things that are going on in the whole solo. And at the very end here of the guitar solo, we go into the major third of C major. So we're modulating from the overall C minor feel throughout the guitar solo back into the C major that comes from the start of the song. I'd like to pick out some of the guitar melodies now and double them up on keyboards just to give them a little bit of extra flavour. So the first one I'm going to do is this phrase. And I think I'll use that sound. The M1 sound from earlier on. The next phrase I'd like to double up on strings is this section. So I think I'll just use the strings that I already have here. Um, it starts here and it's in 8 note triplets. So I'm in step record mode so I'll just step it in. Okay, and I think this note needs to be made longer. And I just happen to know from using this a lot that the exact note velocity that I need is 101. So it just adds an extra bit of spice to that run. And this section here. I don't think there's enough drive in the drums, so I was thinking about maybe doing some staccato strings. Just to reinforce the sort of quarter note vibe of the track. I probably only need one of those. Okay, I like that. We we'll use that for all four of those repetitions. Let's add even more strings to that section. Okay, that's where that Thank you. 
slightly out of time at the end there. I know somewhere I wanted to stick in a third as well. Let me see. That there. What about right? So let's just take this. Right, let's hear how that sounds. At this section here now, after the string part, when the guitar solo gets faster, I think the drums need to react as well and get faster. So let's see if we can come up with a, a more intense drum beat. So I spent a bit of time off camera programming some drums for this part that are more intense. Um, I really felt like maybe the drummer would move around the toms during this section. So here's what I did. <laughs> So that's that guitar solo section written. Let's hear it in context now coming out of the last chorus. Okay, so I heard one more thing there that um, it's really crying out for. I think it was here. Yeah, I think I need to change the drums there and just accent the rhythm of what's happening with the other parts. again there so I don't think the drummer would have three hands let's see Okay, so that's the guitar solo done, and I'm sure this video is long enough. So if I've still got anybody here listening to what I'm doing or paying any attention, then totally, you guys absolutely rock. And I'll see you in episode three.